Theft King is someone I've kept my eye on in the FNAF community for a little while now. Despite the usual topics I cover on this channel, I do keep up with the FNAF community out of curiosity and general interest, and so I tend to catch wind of stuff that goes down, albeit a little later than most people. I first came across his channel after his awful coverage of the Poppy Playtime drama that went down. More info on that in this video I made a few months ago, go check it out if you're interested. And heavily disliked how he 180'd his entire coverage and view of the situation in what can only be described as extreme bias and being easily manipulated. At first he hated the devs for what they were doing, and then he loved them after a poor excuse of an interview that was nothing more than just a few discord texts and a sob story about their start on YouTube. I thought it was spineless to change tone like this and felt he only wanted to get easy views, and given how his overall channel looks with clear clickbait content, I can't say that vibe doesn't feel off whatsoever. Either way, I moved on from that video after I made it and hunkered down back to my typical content. That is, until this past week. Here we have Kane Carter, the developer behind the FNAF fan game Pop Goes, and developer involved in the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, a sort of collaboration of goodwill for fan content about the series, mainly revolving around fan games like his own. Now, Kane Carter is a relatively known shit poster in the FNAF community, especially during his time on the FNAF subreddit, though has slowed down with this kind of attitude as time has gone on, but not gone totally. To put it simply, he doesn't take things super serious a lot of the time. With that being said, Kane isn't exactly new to saying something that would rile people up or get on their nerves, and so on June 21st, 2022, would make a tweet poking fun at those who deemed the Fazbear Fanverse initiative dead as a bunch of people sensationalizing clickbait and overall negativity for easy attention and views. Nobody in particular was called out or anything, it was just a general statement, but some people would be perturbed by this post nonetheless. A little under a month later, on July 19th, Kane would make a tweet referencing a video made by YouTuber Sheep Rampage about the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, and so this time instead of a tweet not alluding to anyone in particular, Kane would make the tweet pointing the finger at FNAF YouTubers. Hence, the Fanverse is a failure. Scott failed us. The initiative is doomed. Of course, the two people that came to mind after seeing this tweet were Sheep Rampage in the recent video that was linked, and Theft can give in both their content are clickbaity, and people had this sentiment before but never spoke out about it on this kind of level. Theft King would make a tweet defending himself despite not being called out for anything in particular, and says, I worry Kane takes this stuff too personally. Keep that line in mind, trust me. The next day on the 20th, Theftkin would make a video trying to dispute Kane's claims of negativity, and claims that he has been getting near constant harassment from followers of Kane's ever since he made the tweet, yet shows no proof to back this claim up, a very serious claim at that mind you. He would state that he was hurt by the tweet and its implications, and then says that he's only spoken positively about Kane and his projects before going on to say nice things about Kane, while mentioning that he never saw nor replied to his Twitter DMs. Kane Carter would make a twit longer the next day on the 21st explaining that he saw Theft King's video and felt moved enough to make an apology video of his own on his own channel. Yeah, no, it was just a wreck roll by Kane, and a pretty funny one at that. After all, the situation wasn't that big of a deal, and mainly came down to a critique on how some people clickbait their videos as heavily as they can, as it's the only way they get views for their channel. Annoyed with this video not being an actual apology and just a little troll, Theft King would go live on his YouTube channel, at first just playing games, but it soon turned into mainly talking about the current drama with Kane. He would go on to explain the tweet that Kane sent, and claim that what he said led to a bunch of people harassing him with no evidence to boot. I realized it was about sheep, they thought that Kane just randomly two weeks later decided to just attack me, which Kane wouldn't do that, like right? Come on, why, why would, I, I don't think Kane would do that. I think it's silly that people thought Kane would do that, right? However, we know the fact that people did this, right? Because if we look, we can see, like, in response to that tweet, people said, cough, theft king, cough, cough, the baddest, cough. Kane's tweet was giving people license to um, start, you know, attacking these creators. But okay, fine. If they're going to just reply in Kane's tweet, that's one thing. But that's not what happened. Things got way worse. And this whole thing escalated. And they started harassing me in my DMs in the comments of my my tweets like he goes on to look for said evidence doesn't find any and then says he reached out to Kane privately and rants a bit before waning off clearly getting emotional I just reached out to Kane and I said privately because I, I wanted to end this here I am I'm, I'm supposed to be saving juniors right now like I'm supposed to be celebrating the success of my juniors video and just chilling this should be a happy day I just quit my job this is my first week as a full-time content creator 
The next 14 or so minutes is Steph King kinda just ranting on about how his day sucked because of the drama and how he's sad and such, and then he starts to go into his messages with the man himself. The first message was sent April 4th, and was mainly a positive message appreciating a comment that he left on a video he just made. The next message was sent about two weeks later on April 17th, trying to get his opinion for a future video he planned on making. Theft King starts to paint Kane as an asshole who never responded to him despite reaching out, and begins to get emotional once more. So at this point, I had messaged him two weeks prior and after he asked me to, and he didn't say anything. Now, yes, I see the check mark is not red, but that doesn't mean anything. You can see you have a pending notification. Uh, hello, hello. Oh, thank you so much, nice demon queen. You can see you have a pending notification in your messages and just not ever open it. So, I, you know, yeah, I know he hadn't read it, but I, I didn't know that he hadn't, he didn't know of it. I mean, I assumed, hey, Kane asked me, yeah, he, he asked me, I, he asked me to do it. And so like, of course, like why, of course I'm going to reach out. He told me, yeah, reach out to me on, read it, reach out to me on, reach out to me on D. I need to get that fucking picture. Hang on a second, guys. I, mean, I need to get that fucking picture because this is what it all comes down to, you know? Fuck. I don't, I don't know why this guy hates me so much. Like I've tried to be so nice to him, I've gone far out of his way. To, oh, anyway. I just wish he didn't. You know, I just wish he didn't. He reads out the message for the viewers and begins to get emotional yet again. Guys, I was so happy because I'm still an up and coming YouTuber at this point. I didn't have any connections. I didn't know anybody. And this was the first time somebody who was like in the fanverse, somebody who has like, who is important. You know, it was like, it was like, wow, like maybe this YouTube thing is going to work out. Maybe, maybe, you know, like. Here's this, here's this person I look up to and admire who's praising my video and telling me to reach out and like. Maybe we can work together and maybe we can do a, a video about him and stuff. And like that, that would be, you know, I was really excited about this tweet, which is why when I look at it now, it's really sad because it's like, you know, knowing where things went and, and how, you know, I never wanted any of it. I, I, I never wanted any of it. I, I never did anything that I delib that deliberately to hurt Kane. It's been about 37 minutes into the stream so far, and by this point, Theft King is getting very emotional about how Kane Carter never responded to him ever, but then the man of the hour would send a donation telling Theft King to check out a brand new tweet he made on his alt account. That brand new tweet would show that he and Kane already aired this out on Discord together, meaning that Theft King had been straight up lying to his fans' faces about Kane never responding to him and getting emotional to clearly manipulate them to feel bad for him. Suddenly, Theft King went from sad about everything to enraged about the audacity Kane had to expose him like that before ending the stream out of panic. Are you kidding me, dude? Are you kidding? Do you really think this is the fucking venue for this? I DM'd you, I'm begging you to fucking speak to me. I've been begging you, and you've just been ignoring me. I didn't do anything. I've been ignoring you. And now you come in private. I'm trying to resolve this in private. And then you come in my fucking live stream and do a donation. Are you serious? Are you kidding me, dude? Do you know how unfair a position that is to put me in? Are you... S wow, dude. Wow. 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 Wow, dude. Okay, now yeah, now you're going to now you want to talk to me? You you know what? Yes, because I'm so fucking desperate for this to be over. I'm so fucking desperate for you to stop weaponizing your audience against me over a video that fucking Sheep Rampage made that I'm going to end this fucking stream and look at this message that you said because I'm that, even though I don't want to because I think what you just did is fucked up, I'm going to do it anyway because that's how fucking desperate I am in the hopes that maybe this can be finally fucking over. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'll be talk to you guys later. Back on Kane's alt Twitter account, he would show a leaked message of Theft King coping saying that he's winning all this, despite shitting his pants after getting caught lying to his fans about him. Theft King will start up another stream for the next 5 hours, and while most of it is gone as of this video, there is an hour and a half clip of it out there, and really shows just how big of a pickle Theft King just got himself into. The beginning of the clip is Theft King blocking Kane on Twitter after getting caught lying and trying to play it off like he's the victim. About Kane Carter's tweets. I don't want to hear anything Kane Carter has to say. Interacting with Kane Carter has caused me nothing but stress. 
I don't need him. He doesn't talk to me anyway. Like he doesn't give me scoops for my videos. Oh my gosh, I just figured it out. It's so simple. Didn't even think to do it. Great. 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 He goes on to brag about challenging Kane, stating he knows his way around making videos. I certainly wouldn't want to go up against Kane when it comes to making a, like a fan game, you know? Like if I was trying to make a game that's like Five Nights at Freddy's with a couple of pictures changed, I would certainly um, not challenge Kane to that. Videos, though, I know a little bit about. The next 10 or so minutes is Steph King ranting about Kane and wanting to talk things out after getting exposed, and implies some sort of last resort that will happen if they don't. Please reply to my DM. Please consider DMing me so we can at least talk, okay? You don't have to promise anything, okay? But can we at least talk privately, like adults, and work this and try to work this out? Because you have, you have not even tried. Can we at least try? Shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't the things that are going to come after this be a last resort? Shouldn't we just, shouldn't we try to talk it out first? After being informed that Fiznom, another fanverse developer, had blocked him, he immediately gets butthurt about it and starts to imply he only got his position because Scott Cawthon felt sorry for him, after saying good things about him just a couple minutes earlier in the stream. You have shown an ancient art known only by masters, Fiznom. Fiznom taught me, senor. Fiznom taught me. I don't know why I didn't think to do it sooner. Fiznom blocked me. I don't give a shit. Whatever. The truth is, Fiznom only got the FNAF. <laughs> the truth is, I, 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 Fiznom claims that he got the FNAF Plus position because he told Scott about why, how all the FNAF, how all the, uh, what the flaws of all the FNAF fan games. I think he really got that position because Scott fucking felt bad for him. There's a million games on Fan Jolts that are way more egregious in terms of like copyright than Fiznom's. Fiznom's got popular and was good, so Scott had to take it down, but he felt bad, so. Seft King would spend the next 15 or so minutes going over his own channel and defending his videos to the viewers, at one point going on a tangent about people who criticize him and flexing his insecure ego. Why you block people over Twitter, uh, Twitter over basic criticism? I can block people over Twitter for whatever reason I want, buddy. Also, thanks for your money. I, was, I, hope, you, I hope you banned him, by the way. Sleep Live, this is this guy, Sleep Live, who just said that, made a video about me. And called it, and he, he complains, these people complain about me and say my thumbnails are dramatic. They go, he called it Seft King, the greatest threat to the FNAF community. <laughs> the greatest threat to the FNAF community. What a fucking clown. I was like, wait, you, are, people accuse me of having ridiculous clickbaits, and then you come out here with that crazy shit? And the funniest thing is, again, 99% of FNAF fans see that video and they go, who the fuck is Theft King? <laughs> the fact that you think anyone gives a shit about me enough to watch a video about me is insane. It's it's like you're, it shows that you're so out of touch. Sleep live. You 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 you, yeah. You're very out of touch. Everyone who does this stuff, everyone who talks shit about me, like on Twitter and stuff like that, doesn't realize that 99% of the community doesn't know who the fuck Theft King is. They're gonna see you talking shit. They're gonna go, who the fuck Theft King? Some of those people are gonna Google that, Google me, and some of those people are gonna watch my videos, and some of those people are gonna become subscribers. So you know what? Keep saying my name. Keep blowing me up. You can have Twitter. I don't give a fuck. He goes on to read out super chats from the stream, watch his recent video he made on Kane, and ends things off on another rant about him, saying, From what I've seen in the last few days, I, I think Kane Carter is, is a vindictive, evil person. Um, you know, I'm not religious, but like, if there was a hell, Kane Carter will burn for eternity. Like, that's straight up the kind of person I think he is. He's vindictive and likes to see people suffer. Yeah, if this isn't pure cope, I have no idea what is anymore. Theft King would post a tweet longer the next day apologizing for all he said on the stream, but it was far too late as people were cutting ties with him left and right, and posts were all over Twitter about the stuff he's done, stuff that we'll get into down the line. It's needless to say this was just an attempt to salvage what little connections he had left in the community after he destroyed his image in just a few short days. It's also quite clear that throughout this entire charade he has been trying his hardest to play the victim when he wasn't at all, and so Kane decided to take things a step further to really show the truth on how Theft King is. On July 23rd, Kane Carter would post a video responding to Theft King, aptly titled My Actual Response to Theft King, in which he goes over everything in a similar fashion like this very video you're watching, only with some exclusive evidence that only he knew about. As it turns out, after Theft King made that initial tweet about the fanverse on June 21st, Theft King would send a message to Kane on June 25th on Discord about how he was being harassed because of said tweet. 
The message is insanely long, but if you even take a look at this screenshot of part of it, you can tell Theft King is insanely butthurt about the criticism he was facing. The claims of being harassed by fans of Kane went nowhere as Theft King provides no evidence, and so Kane would respond with a not nearly as long message thankfully, asking Theft King for evidence of those harassing him and giving some actual well thought out criticism for his channel and why he personally dislikes it the way it is. Theft King would never respond after this, and so Kane would move on with his life like any other normal person would. The stuff on the 19th of July would go down, and so Theft King would DM Kane the next day once more, this time threatening to make a video that would be detrimental to Kane's future career if fully completed and released. He would complain about getting even more hate without any evidence as expected, and then ends things off with a long message asking Kane to make a public tweet telling his fans to stop harassing him under the guise of content creators as if it's not only him who's gotten butthurt about everything going down. The rest of Kane's video is going over the live stream and stuff we've already covered, so we'll move right on. As people on Twitter start to see Theft King get his just desserts, they would leak their own DMs with the man, showing just how crazy and unhinged he can be behind the scenes. The first would be a video of someone who messaged him and started to troll him until he got blocked. The next would be a genuine fan who apologized to him for something that happened, and Theft King going on a tangent about how his apology sucks, interestingly telling him, if you're sorry, tweet it, borderline harassing the guy to apologize to him publicly. When he eventually does, he complains he should have tagged him in the actual tweet, basically punching down on the dude he just bullied into apologizing publicly to make his public image look like a victim. Given how he completely 180'd his attitude with the Poppy Playtime stuff and when Kane exposed him in his livestream, it was clear to me after seeing the messages that Theft King likes to portray himself as a victim publicly, but privately he seems to be an asshole. The next would be even more messages of Theft King asking yet another person to apologize to him publicly, going as far as to give him the sentence to post on his page. On top of that, after the guy made the apology, he went on to criticize the way it was written just like that last person we went over, and then had the audacity to ask the guy to link his YouTube video so people can see the full context. More messages would be leaked of him being a general asshole to someone who only wanted to give him advice, going on an unhinged rant about how the person hates him for no reason and is just trying to get their sick kicks, when all they wanted to do was give good advice, some really crazy unhinged shit. Theft King would also give his opinions on religion given he's an atheist, and while not the worst case we've gone over on this channel by far, it is certainly weird for someone to want it banned simply because he doesn't believe in it. Next, we have a video clip of Theft King telling his fans during that 5 hour livestream that he was working on a video, and starts to imply said video could be detrimental for Kane's career if it comes out, just like that threat he sent on Discord a few days earlier. He is. And, and, and yeah, of course, I'm covering all of this in a video, and I think it's gonna look re reflect really badly on Kane. I think it's gonna look really badly on Kane. And who knows, what if Scott sees that video? That's what I- if I was Kane, that's what I'd be thinking, like, what if Scott sees Theft King's video call, showing, like, showing how cruel these actions were? I'd be kind of worried. What if it's midnight where I'm at? <laughs> Behind the scenes, Theft King was acting like nothing bad was happening, but he was losing subscribers at an insane rate, and an admin in his very own Discord server even left because of the drama, stating their disappointment in Theft King as a person. At one point, a whole two minute clip came out showing him getting butthurt someone named Johnny Blocks dared call him a trash drama YouTube channel. Just take a listen to it. Johnny Blocks, fucking asshole. Look at this guy. Hell yeah, I mean, this guy is a fucking clown, obviously. This whole thing is hilarious because this fucking idiot. Fuck that guy, dude. Wow. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I don't know why he would get into this. I guess I guess he was waiting for his opportunity. I think he's jealous or something. Waiting for his opportunity to try to go for me, but... You swing at the king, you best not miss. And these fucking guys miss. Yeah, I think he, Johnny Blocks absolutely looks like a fucking asshole. Who the fuck do you think you are, dude? And I'm sure he feels like a fucking idiot. You get fucking Johnny Blocks fucking saying, hell yeah, brother, let's jump straight into chasing that bag. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? Johnny, I'm sorry, you're gonna publicly call me out like this. I have every right to do this. I have every right to fucking dunk on you when my video kicks ass. Don't let anyone confuse you into thinking that Johnny Blocks is punching up. He's He's not. He's not. I may have a lot more subscribers than him, but he is far more of an established YouTuber than I. You're punching up. Well, no, I wasn't even punching. I didn't attack this guy. I was. I would never attack Johnny Blocks. Who the fuck do you think you are, dude? You have no idea. You know, who, who's that? Like, 
So okay, so when I make the video, I'm getting my bag. So let's let's look at let's look at Johnny Block's videos and see and see if he's ever getting his bag. Okay, let's see. Come on, you're covering all the breaking shit too, dude. Sorry that you're not comfortable. Okay, I understand some people aren't comfortable covering the really hard hitting shit. I get it. It's not for everybody. You need to have a, have a layer of thick skin. Yeah, I would encourage you to watch the video because you're gonna probably feel like a fucking idiot. What the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? And who the fuck do you think you are, Johnny Blocks? I don't need your permission to make a fucking video, you fucking idiot. Is that maybe this guy is envious of my channel or something? This person's either incredibly jealous of, of my success and trying to sabotage me. The only thing that makes sense is that he legitimately believed that I was gonna get canceled over this. I know, talk about an egomaniac. Isaac, also known as I'm Baddest, another YouTuber, will go on to expose DMs with Deft King after he told a fan that Isaac told him he deserved some of the harassment. As it turns out, Isaac said that he did indeed deserve some of the hate, mainly because it was about his content being clickbait. Deft King would take this personally and start to attack Isaac for daring to say some of it was warranted and their friendship was quickly over soon after. It's insane to see Theft King speedrunning the end of his career in real time, but when looking at everything that has been going on, it's not exactly shocking at all. He constantly asks people to apologize publicly to make him look like a victim, and goes as far to villainize anybody who dares say something even slightly critical about him or his content. Earlier, he said that Kane takes it too personal, but we all know by now this to be projection coming from the man who inserted himself into a situation he literally wasn't even a part of. And yet, we still have one more leaked message to go over, and something that clearly shows you the type of man that Theft King truly is. Liam, the developer of Afton Built, another fan game, will come out about his experience with Theft King, showing that when he had concerns about his video about their game coming out, that he didn't give a shit about putting the employees' jobs at risk due to NDAs they signed, stating that Scott Cawthon, creator of the FNAF franchise, would never sue a fan game developer and posted the video without their go-ahead. Theft King would try to bribe Liam with some of the video's revenue, but Liam wouldn't take it because he has credibility behind his name, along with more messages of Theft King trying to keep the video up as much as he can. This leaked encounter was the most telling to me. Sure, someone could be unhinged and an asshole in DMs, but to risk other people's jobs because you want the video out now rather than later with their permission is a sign of a very dangerous person to work with. A person that only cares about themselves and themselves only. This would be cemented even further as Steph Key would go out to try and paint Liam as the bad guy, saying how he selectively nuked their DMs in a Twitter post to make him look worse. He says he never bribed Liam, and that the money was only because he saw he was stressed and wanted to compensate for the work he did. He reiterated that he was being accommodating, but that Liam is now using the drama to get back into the good graces with his own people. He even admits that Liam told him the lawyers needed to see the video first before it goes live, meaning that Theft King himself chose his own interests versus the interests of his collaborator, again showing that he only cares about himself and himself only. Liam would respond to this with a message of his own, saying how Theft King released the video within 24 hours of meeting him, how he basically manipulated him into giving him the info needed for the video, and how when Liam finally realized what had been going on, it was too late as Theft King wasn't willing to cut out the segment they agreed upon. This has turned into more of a he says she said type of situation, so it's a good idea to keep an eye on this for any future updates. This situation had completely taken over FNAF Twitter, and it soon started to leak into Theft King's own subscriber base, and so in a quick panic he released a brand new video, originally titled My Apology to Now Taking the L. The video is 3 minutes of Theft King only apologizing for the livestream on King Carter and for making clickbaity content. He doesn't go over anything else he's done, like implying to make a video to ruin Kane's career, trying to bully everyone who he feels wrongs him into posting a public apology, and generally just being a sensitive egomaniac. It was pretty clear the apology was made only because he got caught lying and everything blew up in his face, and was trying to keep the apology as vague as he can as he never goes into any detail on the heinous things he said about Kane and others, so hopefully this video fills that gap for you guys. Also something to note, Isaac said that Theft King is 31 years old, meaning that a fully grown adult went out of his way to insert himself into a situation he wasn't even a part of, proceeded to lie to everyone watching his livestream about Kane never contacting him and slander his name, which led to multiple leaked messages of him asking people to apologize publicly to make him look like a victim, and for video clip after video clip of him being an egomaniac over anyone who dared criticize him be shown to thousands. He really dug this hole all for himself, it's quite impressive if you ask me.
Seth King's channel seems to be doing okay as of this recording. He lost around 11k subscribers since everything went down, and it's too early to tell whether this drama caused a significant dent in his career yet. With that being said, I feel obligated to make this video as it's clear he was being vague with how and why things went down on his channel, and I feel all of you guys deserve to know as much info as you possibly can on just how bad everything truly was to make a proper judgement. So, what do you guys think about Theft King? After going over everything that went down, I can't say my original reason to dislike his content was unfounded, and I ain't exactly shocked he acted this way behind the scenes. Besides the part about being 31 years old, that was a bit shocking, I legit thought the dude was 20 years old. Make sure to tell me your opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, make sure to like and subscribe, and as always, with all of that out of the way, I will see you guys later.